Hello and welcome back to the Herefordshire Regimental Museum's YouTube channel and today we're going to be looking at our Herefordshire Rifle Volunteers Cabinet specifically covering the era of the Boer War 1899 to 1902 and that was the second Boer War um, which is quite interesting and now Herefordshire obviously being a uh, territorial well, rifle volunteer county at the time it supplied volunteer service companies to its parent regiment uh, for want of a better word of the King Shropshire Light Infantry and it's quite interesting in our cabinet here, we have various pictures. There's a picture there of the Herefordshire Detachment, who are now at the front. And there's the Ross Volunteers there at the back. And various pictures here of the Rifle Volunteers at various shooting competitions. Some nice pictures of silver there, but also very interesting with these. I'll try and uh, zoom in on the Ross Volunteers here. You can see they're all in there. They're all in their khaki drill. They've all got their Slade Wallace equipment and they're armed with the Long Lees. We have various bits of mess kit here. Interesting there with the miniature Queen South Africa with bars South Africa 1901, Orange Free State and Cape Colony. Really nice there with the Hereford's collar dog there. Notice it's just a lion with no scroll underneath. One of the stalwarts, shall we say, of, of military units here in Herefordshire is uh, Armour Sergeant Bethel there who served in the regiment, uh, and well, basically for nearly 40, 50 years, finally retiring as the caretaker of the barracks. And there's his uh, Volunteer Force Long Service Medal, number 78 there in the regiment. And we've got various other groups here containing, containing Queen South Africa's and trios, helmet plates, etc. Including the helmet plate there, and well, the cross plate belt and belt buckle of the officers of the Rifle Volunteers. The reason why I wanted to bring you to this cabinet today is our one of our, well, probably our most recent acquisition to the museum, is this rifle here. And those of you who know your military rifles will know that this isn't your standard British rifle. It's actually a German-produced Mauser. And those of you out there might be asking, so what, why is this important and why is it in our Boer War cabinet? Well, this Panama Mauser, the 1896, was built by the German government on contract to the government of South Africa. And the government of South Africa at the time was purchasing arms to sell to its farmers for self-defense, hunting, etc. But obviously when the Boer War kicked off only four years later, these rifles ended up in the hand, well, were already in the hands of very experienced marksmen, that being the Boer farmer. You'll see there, there is a standard bolt action, an internal five round magazine. But what's revolutionary about this weapon and why it's quite important to look at is the working parts here. You'll see that there is a cutout for a charger. Now a charger is a formed piece of steel where five rounds could be loaded in and it gave the ability of the, the firer to rapidly load five rounds in. When you look at what British troops at the time were armed with, which was the Long Lee, this was, yes, a magazine fed weapon but you'd only load one round at a time. There was no capability to load um, quickly, as it were, five rounds. You had to load one round at a time or change the magazine. Now, if I cut over to our First World War cabinet, you'll see an SMLE, a short magazine Lee Enfield, with a magazine of 10 rounds fitted. And you'll see the little loops in front of the magazine. And that was originally came from the days of the Longley where you would actually have a chain fitted so that when you changed your magazine and dropped the magazine out of the working parts, you would actually have the magazine dangling underneath the weapon whilst you fitted your new magazine. Now, this is great for the first 20 rounds, but after that, you've got to reload your magazines or go to drop down to one round at a time, which obviously, those of you engaged with a, a long range, a lot of well, long engagements, is not really ideal. That's why. After the Boer War, British rifles were fitted with the cutout there, the, so you could be loaded by a five-round charger. And that's why this rifle actually had the edge over the Long Lee during, during the Boer War. Now, those of you who follow British muzzleloaders on YouTube, he's actually done a practical test of comparing this to the Long Lee, and it does have that edge in that short engagement time. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in quickly on our label there for those of you who want to read you can pause the video now and read any of the bits and bobs if you're interested in 
the calibre or the makers and marks of this weapon. It's really important to know that things like this, as us as a museum, we keep developing our displays. And those of you out there who support us on Patreon and also through other donations and through our various socials, such as YouTube, Facebook, our ever-growing podcast, Just a Walk in the Sun, please do tune in and listen to those. Just in, listen out and enjoy it and basically support your small regimental museums because sadly in today's world we seem to be closing regimental museums one a year or two a year whilst we as a totally volunteer run and supported museum would always need your help. So please do reach out and help. We're always looking for volunteers to help us run the museum. So that's all for me for now. Bye. <laughs>